What's up guys, Mike Winters here. Welcome back to Point and Shoot. Today we have interview number two with uh, the famous SGA, um, Sacramento Gang Archives. For those of you who are unfamiliar with SGA, um, SGA is on the internet. He's a blogger who covers the gang politics in uh, Sacramento. Now, if you haven't seen the first interview, that's okay. There's There are different questions and you can watch it later. This interview is going to be dope. And with that, I'd like to welcome SGA back into the studio for the second time. Interview number two, starting now. SGA, man, what's up? How you doing? Thank you for coming back. What's going on, Mike? It's my pleasure, man. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on your platform the first time, and thank you for allowing me on your platform the second time. You know, uh, yeah, for this part two, I appreciate it, man. Uh, let's get it, man. Yeah, anytime, man. Appreciate you coming. Uh, you're you're welcome on this channel anytime. So, what was your reaction to the first video? What was your reaction to the fans' reaction to the video? A lot of people were saying that we were the same person, and there was a lot of gossip about who you were, and you know. We were, you know, Mike Winters and SGA are the same guy. It's a huge conspiracy. What was your reaction to all that? Well, I kind of expected the fans to appreciate that we collaborated, but the extent that they appreciated it, I honestly didn't expect that shit. So, yeah. Um, and as far as them thinking that you and I are the same person, has to be the stupidest shit ever. I mean, fuck. Um, they thought that I was 10 different people. I mean, they thought I was DC, Baby Mayweather, a fucking barber, Sacramento Street Wars, all kinds of shit. And now you. I mean, fuck. All these Google-generated answers is just hilarious. And they can't get over it. They just can't sit back and watch the content. But, you know, we're going to let those people do what those people do. Um, as far as the fans and the supporters, hey, shout out every single last one of you guys. And, um, yeah, just shout out you guys, man. You guys are the best. Like, go ahead and look at those comments in our first interview and just pay attention to how much they really appreciated our collaboration. So why not do it again? Yeah, I just don't think that I could pull that off. I mean, it just seems kind of, I mean, who would dare to do that? Who would dare be like the secret guy and then start playing like that? Like, oh, I'm going to interview myself. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. That's the, that is pretty bad. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. So a lot's been going on since the last time we talked. And, uh, you know, I noticed that your, your, your content, you've kind of, uh, explored other kind of content where you're doing more conspiracy theory, rhetoric and things like that. Um, I just wanted to ask, is there, is this a, is this a new direction you're taking with the channel or with the content? Or is this just something that you're just trying out or what, what's the, what's the story with that? Yeah, actually a lot has happened and a lot has changed. But as far as the conspiracy theory um, rhetoric, like as far as the Mozzie video I had uploaded and um, the Kodak Black one, which had got deleted, um, that was just something that I had peeped that has something to do with hip hop and it relates to my channel, you know. Um, but no, honestly, I'm just going to stick to the archives. And But I had my whole um, content laid out before the situation with Big Bird. I mean, I had some hits I planned on dropping, especially for my um, 10K follower celebration. I was going to hit the fans with something nice. But um, now I'm kind of reconstructing um, my content. So, yeah, I'm just going to stick to what I've been doing and do it a little bit better. Um, yeah, you guys will see. Man, that sucks about your main channel, man. Um, you'll get back. You'll get, you'll, you'll get your numbers back up. Um, you just got to start, start over again, I guess. I mean, when you, when you first, I mean, speaking of when you first started, when you first started, you're, you, you were a little different. You weren't, you weren't funny. You, the funny thing, like, where did the funny thing happen? Like when, did, how did that happen? And do you think that the funniness is what makes people mad or do you think that they're going to be mad regardless? And uh, just talk, talk about the funny element for a minute. Yes, you're absolutely right. And if you noticed, oh, well, actually it sucks because my fucking channel got deleted. But if you guys can remember my earlier videos, they were just straight documentaries and I was just giving you guys what you guys wanted to hear. And um, I took uh, some months off because of that situation that I'm not going to speak on. And um, when I came back, my views were in the shitter. Like, fuck. So, you know, I had to reconstruct like I'm doing right now. And, hey, I just came back with the um, comedy. And that's when I decided to come back with the packs and the scrapes and the scraps and the fuck. But look, check this out. Before I came with the comedy, in my comments, my earlier videos, people were already saying that I'm a snitch and they hate my voice and that I'm saying too much. All kinds of bullshit. Um, yeah, they were hating. But um, now, since I be um, quote unquote roasting the coons, you know, um, I guess that pissed them off and their friends on a whole other level. But, you know, me... 
I don't give a fuck. But of course, when I started roasting the coons, quote unquote, my subscribers went up way faster than they were before. So yeah, I guess that's my niche. Hey, it's a good niche. People like it. You get a lot of you get a lot of views. People are positive feedback. Hey, fuck it, run with it. So do you think that giving your opinion on this stuff also, uh, um, along with being funny, do you think that that works for you or do you think that works against you as far as like the way people view your channel and channel growth and everything? Well, to answer your question, because this question kind of relates to the last one. Um, I was reporting objective news before the comedy. I was just giving Sacramento's history and news without the satire. And as you can see, my channel was doing good. But as soon as I came with the comedy and my own opinions with the satire, that's when I began to blow, quote unquote. And I was at first just Sacramento gang archives and everyone started calling me SGA. And, you know, you've seen the comments. So uh, in my opinion, I think that that made an excellent impact on my channel. And um, these coons, they get pissed the fuck off because they know it's the truth. They do not know how to react to, I mean, someone that's calling them out on their bullshit. This has never happened before, at least in Sacramento. So, hey, I guess it has a positive impact, but it has its pros and cons because you see my channel got deleted. But just like they tried to silence me on Instagram and I figured out a way around that shit, I'm going to do the same thing with YouTube. I mean, look, I got this under control over here, you know? So they can try all they want to report my shit and do all this bullshit, but hey, I'm SDA. I know how to get around this fucking algorithm. So, hey. Yeah, I guess I can see how that works. You know, you have the, 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 the news part of it, and then you're also appealing to people who like comedy. So you, you're offering a, a wider range of content. So I can fuck with it. Now, since the last interview came out, you've had a couple questionable posts. And I say questionable because I saw a few very notable people come out and discredit you publicly. And so I'm just kind of curious about that. Do you need to look for other sources or what's... Can you talk about that? See, I know exactly what you mean by a few notable people. Quote, unquote, few. But man, I know who the fuck you're talking about. And that's a... Well, we're not going to say his name or his nickname. Big Bird. But look, of course, a motherfucker is going to try and silence me when his whole goddamn career is pinky down and red rag this and this and that. And look, getting my videos taken down and trying to silence me and censor me is a completely bad look. And out of all the videos that I've been doing on people for the last 11 months, nobody has got any of my videos taken down except for Mr. Forehead himself, reinforced steel juggernaut head, low TYS. So what the fuck does that tell you? All I did was feature him for about a minute and 40 seconds about his past. Not trying to expose him, but it's Sacramento's history. Is that my fault? Um, I mean, damn, that's, that's, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, you know, building a YouTube channel is hard, but you know, the risk comes with the, you know, you, you, a lot of people are mad at you. So, I mean, you got to almost expect people to, to come after you like this and, you know, you, you got to be up on your shit, I guess. Um, to be in your position. So, yeah, that sucks, man. Now, I did notice that you had an upload involving an open case, another open case. And I just wanted to ask again, what is your etiquette on doing that? Like, what is your rules that you have on how you go about uploading uh, about an open case? Because, I mean, uh, you, the, the UNLV basketball player, um, that case is open case. So what's your, what, what is your etiquette on that, on, on reporting on that? Yeah, that's some crazy ass shit. Um, he moved from Sacramento a long time ago and ended up in, um, I don't know, fucking some town playing basketball and then transferred to UNLV, which is Las Vegas. And he was a star and somehow he was getting caught with guns and, um, started cooning and he found his way back to Sacramento and caught that case. But honestly, my etiquette on reporting open cases, um, some I just won't fucking report on and the other ones, um, I just, you know, um, give the fans updates because that's what they ask for. So, yeah, I don't want to um, post anything or upload any video with any kind of content that's going to hurt their case. That's why it's certain cases that I can't wait to get done and um, finished so I can report on those. Not that I want anything bad to happen, you know, just like um, Beastie, the guy that allegedly, quote unquote, killed Frank and he was down for that. I never reported on that situation fully until he got out. So, hey, that's my etiquette. So has anyone notable, uh, like a street figure, shall we call him, has anyone ever DM'd you uh, in support of what you're doing and said, hey, I'm a big fan of your channel and, uh, you know, keep going and all that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. But like I said, I can't disclose that because of safety reasons and not because of mine, because I don't give a fuck about this shit or these coons. 
But, you know, um, I understand um, their street life and the street code and what they have to live by. And they can get DP'd. And some of the people that um, acknowledge me and salute me, my videos, they are in prison, you know. And they can get seriously stabbed up and poked the fuck up. And I don't want that shit happening to them, especially if they're fans. So, hey, um, respect and shout out to every single person that supports my page and my channel and what the fuck I do. And it's a whole lot. Trust me. So what do you think people are going to want to see from your channel moving forward? Like, what do you think draws people to your channel? And what do you think makes your channel stand out so much? Like, and your success is a is a reflection of that, obviously. Um, I honestly feel like they're drawn to um, the realistic nature of my content. I mean, I don't have my videos all dressed up um, with intros. I mean, nothing to people who do that. I mean, it's just... That's, I'm not a 100% YouTuber. I just get on here and give sax history and satire, you know? I feel like they're drawn to the rawness of my videos because my content is authentic. And then I throw in that little dash of comedy, you know? That's why satire is completely enjoyable. How could you not enjoy my content, you know? I mean, hey, I didn't realize what I have in my hands, honestly, until January, around that time, and then even more so recently. And I might not read every single comment the same day, but when I have time... I read the comments and I actually pay attention to what the people like. And I go off of what the people like in the comments because I do it for them. So, hey, the better I get, the better I get. And the fans, they help me get better. So shout out my fans and my supporters. So do you find it discouraging at all with everything going on with like losing your channels and everything? I mean, does this is this discouraging or does this make you want to go harder uh, with your content? Um, as far as channels with a plural, um, I only lost one channel and that was my main page, my original one, I should say. But I had a backup page, and that was NGA, but I switched that to now the main page, Sacramento Gang Archives, SGA. And I also made SAC, which is SAC, Sacramento Archives Classics, for my old videos that were going viral on my original page. So, yeah, that's my next step. And I'm rebranding so I don't get copyrighted because, look, I am a motherfucker from the streets. I don't know anything about a copyright, infringement, fair use, none of that fucking shit, you know? I don't give a fuck. I'm not fucking around with no more of... Stolen content, all that bullshit. But in all reality, it is fair use. It's just these motherfuckers is scared to get their whole fiasco shut down. So, hey, but on the um, SAC Archives Classics page, I will be dropping videos um, pretty much every day or every two days so you guys can enjoy the classic videos I used to give you guys because those are not gone. Hey, like I said before, go to our first interview and go look at the comments and just go pay attention to the appreciation that SGA has. I mean, you can't look at my comments on my old channel, obviously. So, yeah. Um, this isn't discouraging at all, you know? The streets know what the fuck is up with SGA. So, I know they miss me, and if you pay attention, YouTube is boring as fuck without me. So, they got DC, Baby Mayweather, and, um, fucking Swamp Stories has went fucking all over the fucking place, making Jeezy and fucking Gucci Man. Shit, we don't even fucking need. What the fuck, Quavo? Man, I I'll be back, you know? Um, by the time this video, this interview drops, um, I should have maybe one or two archives out, but pretty soon, I'm going to be dropping... A shitload of content and it's gonna be way better and trust me you guys will love the fuck out of that shit more than my other videos so have you thought of any uh different like alternative ways to add visual aids that you're not using copyrighted material that can be stricken down um yeah it's plenty of ways to entertain without using um copyrighted material but um yeah I, i've been doing pretty much a lot of research that's why i've been mia on copyright and fair use laws so um yeah i can make it work just like how they try to get me censored on instagram I can figure out a way to get around um, all these fucking bullshit-ass laws and copyright infringement bullshits that they're putting me through. So, yeah, I'll be all right. Do you um, ever worry about your identity being leaked, like your voice getting recognized or anything like that? I mean, I'm not concerned about my voice getting leaked because, I mean, on my very first video with the Hingster Root Millie, um, I used my regular voice and I left it up there just to show that I never cared. I mean... You know, hey, if they want to figure out who I am, hire the FBI or some fucking sh private investigator or some bullshit. Um, I'm not really concerned about my identity getting leaked. You know, if they want to leak my voice, then go ahead. That's not going to figure out or put a dent on who I am. Um, as far as my address and my identity, then now you guys have something on your hands. But other than that, fuck no. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of nerve wracking, you know. So I hear you mention goulash and other prison terms. Um. I'm just curious, have you done prison time at all? Or are you just saying that stuff? Well, that goulash is just some funny shit that I like to say. 
um, it's a nickname that I gave a tray that they tried to give me when I went to county jail. I've never been to prison. And um, yeah, I've been to county jail twice. And that second time, I was like, fuck that shit. Never again. You know, that PB&J, um, I was cold. Um, all kinds of shit. Crazy people, you know. Um, fuck that shit, you know. I just did a lot in the streets. And I've been there and done that. And, you know, but as far as jail and prison, yeah, I don't have a career. I never had a career um, going back and forth to jail. But we all know about Mr. Keyshawn Strickland, a.k.a. Good Kid Gone Gangster. So I like to use him as the poster child of motherfuckers who had good lives and fucked it up. Yeah, I was just kind of curious if you were like, uh, if you did a bunch of jail time and you're, you know, trying to, you know, steer kids in the other direction, you know, not to go down that path or something like that. I don't know, just something I was curious about. So uh, do you, does it, does it annoy you at all when people try to, uh, you know, say that you're somebody like another blogger that just wants to be anonymous? Uh, does the mistaken identity shit, does that annoy you at all? Or is that, uh, do you feed, does it, does it, uh, do you play into it? Or how does it affect you? Well, um, the mistaken identity thing does not annoy me, not one bit. I actually think that it's quite hilarious that they think that I'm you or you're me. I mean, what the fuck? That shit is crazy. And they think that I'm about, like I said, 10 different people. Um, they even try to leak my voice. But that, like I said, wouldn't put a dent in their little investigation. Um, if they want to figure out who I am, hire the FBI or leak my address or leak my entire identity, you know? Because I use my um, real verse and my, my, my real voice, I'm sorry, in the very first video in the Heemsteru Billy, uh, Heemsteru Millie video. So I don't give a fuck if you guys know my voice. So, hey, and I also know that these coons that hate me go through the comments and be pissed off. They punch the fuck out of that air on some Mike Tyson shit trying to figure out why in the hell do people support me. Like, it's actually people who are mad at Sacramento and mad at you for supporting me and interviewing me. And that is absolutely mind-blowing. Like, come on, man. That's crazy. Not to mention, they let their emotions get the best of the rationality. They think that I am you and you are interviewing yourself. What the fuck? So let me ask you this. Is there any type of, like, uh, do you get any paranoia or anything when you leave the house? Like, when you go to your normal life and you have to interact with people that may or may not be in the streets and you're just kind of like, you know who you are, but other people don't know who you are. Is that ever, is that on your mind at all? Or do, do you just not think about it? Or, you know, is, is, does it make you paranoid? I mean, because let's face it, if people found out who you were, you might be in some serious danger. So I was just curious about paranoia. Can you talk about that? Well, of course I'd be paranoid because my channel has gotten almost 2 million views. So, um, you know, naturally, I have a paranoid feeling, but it's not like I live a double life. Like, um, I make these videos, and I go around these coons to get information, and, you know, I go back home and make these videos. It's not like that. Um, I, I never come in contact with these coons. I never, I never come across these coons. Um, I'm never around the coons or anybody that I should worry about that could harm me. You know, um, I'm pretty much out the way, even though I live in Sacramento. So, yeah, um, I don't really feel like I live a double life. I just, I'm just a blogger, a YouTube blogger who knows a lot about sack history and just like the people in my comments say i look at myself as a um hood historian Fuck. right and you're also a journalist news j journalist you're you're a person who reports current events also so um you know there's that you know too well i mean it's good that you're not participating in the streets and you're like in the streets and doing that and then turning around and then you know throwing people under the bus. I mean, I was kind of curious. I didn't want to come out outright say that, but, um, or ask you that, but it doesn't sound like you're in the streets, like actively, you know, participating and finding out this information and, and then reporting on it. It sounds more like you're, you're just, uh, you got a source or something. I don't know. Yeah. So this is bringing me into my next question because I know you've mentioned before several times that you have a girlfriend um, now does she know about all this? Is she sort I mean, what, what, what's the deal with that? Because if she knows, or if she were to find out, you know, there could be some implications, uh, you know, it could get ugly. So what could, could we get the, uh, could we get the scoop on your girlfriend situation, uh, regarding what you're doing with the internet? Yeah. Well, my girl pretty much doesn't know anything about, um, me being SGA and, um, but it's been a few times where she has um, brought to my attention about um, my page and Swamp Stories in a DC baby can't read. And um, yeah, I have to play it off and you know how that goes. But I never had any slip ups or 
you know, anything like that. So, yeah, I have it all under control in my household. You know, I know what the fuck I'm doing. And I cannot let her end up getting me turned into a pack. So, yeah. Dang, that's crazy that you've just been able to secretly do this for, like, for as long as you have, for, like, over a year, a year, on and off, um, without her finding out, and she's even listening to the show. That's crazy. That's impressive. So, I just, are, what do we have to look forward to? Do we have anything big to look forward to? Is there anything big on the horizon that we can get excited for and, you know wake up in the morning and go check and see if there's any, you know, is there anything like really, like really good coming that we can think about? Is there anything to look forward to? Um, definitely. Uh, I will be editing the episode 4200 episode and I will continue the series on that because I have not finished that obviously. And, um, I will do like maybe in a 30 to hour long special on the garden block members. And, um, pretty soon I'll be doing the, um, maybe a 30 to hour long special on the 10 letter gang members. And that is all of them. So yeah. Um, I'm not done. Um, I actually have better and more content to do. So, yeah. Uh, Mac Jizzle didn't stop any fucking thing. So, yeah. Tune in. Oh, yeah. I saw the little trailer, the little teaser thing that you posted. Yeah, that's that's going to go crazy. I'm sure they're going to hate it. But, you know, it's it's uh, it's not anything that isn't available online. And I don't really know where. I mean, you're just such a mysterious guy. It's just like, you know, I don't know what to say about it. But, you know, it's interesting. So we're covering it. I just want to also point out the fact that there's going to be a lot more Sacramento Gang Archives is, you know, his kids are getting older, you know, they're going to start posting content of their own. And all of a sudden, the whole internet is just going to be a fucking free for all with all of this secret information that's not secret. So I just, you know, that's not a warning. That's just, that's, you know, I'm just advising everyone to brace for it because it's coming. It's coming in fast. Moving on, um, we have a couple more questions here. So in the meantime, where can we find you as far as on YouTube? And like, I know you got several pages now. Can you just go over all your little socials and everything where we can find you at so that we can tune in for all your stuff? Well, in the meantime, you can find me at Sacramento Gang Archives. And uh, yeah, my new main page will pop up. Also, I created a channel called um, SAC, as I mentioned before, and that's Sac Archives Classics. So yeah. I will be dropping all my throwbacks on that page. And, um, yeah, a little bit of twist. Different content, more content. Um, yeah, it'll be spicy. Also, my um, Instagram, Coonville916. You know, nothing's changed. It's just my numbers slightly went down. But trust me, I have something up my sleeve, as always. All right, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming and fucking with me again on the podcast. And, um, you know, I know it's a lot of hassle for you to have to, you know, change your voice and send me the answers and everything. But, you know, I think the fans are fucking with it, and I think uh, they appreciate it a lot. And fans, if you guys want to see a part three, then go ahead and uh, leave a comment and uh, tell us what you think. Uh, Like, comment, subscribe, the whole thing, you know. Make sure everyone's subbed up to everything, and uh, it's going to be dope. So um, I want to thank you again for coming, and... um, you're always welcome and uh fucking you know yeah well thank you mike for having me um once again i highly appreciate it for um me being able to be on your platform and voice my opinion and um set some things straight because a lot of people have me and my entire um objective misconstrued and you see the police rumors die down because they see what i'm about and my etiquette and my moral compass so yeah thanks for that opportunity you know it doesn't matter whose platform is bigger you know we're all working together and we're both sacramento legends according to the fans so we're going to keep giving them what they want and what they need and yeah if they want us to collaborate i feel like we should so hey shout out mike and shout out everyone who thinks i'm mike and shout out everyone who thinks mike is sga you know what i'm saying i'm gone you know i couldn't have said that any better you know uh I get kind of flattered when people, because I've had people in my DMs like say, like, "Hey, you're you're SGA, you son of a bitch." I'm fucking, and I'm like, "Dude, no, I'm not." But I'm not mad that you think that because that's kind of a that's a compliment, you know. How am I? You know, people think I know this much about the streets. No, I don't. I get my info from SGA. I watch SGA, and that's how I know. These people don't share information. I I just show up and shoot a video for them and then leave. Like, this isn't, like, I'm not hanging out on the block and, like, politicking with the guys and everything. Like, no, I don't have that type of relationship. I watch SGA. And uh, we're going to leave it at that. So um, if you guys want a part three, you guys know what to do. I need comments. I need people requesting, saying yes. 
part three, because you guys did great last time. It, it compelled us to do it, and here we are doing it. So, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go round three, um, depending on how well this video does. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, point and shoot. Signing out. Uh, SGA in the building. Logging out. See you guys next time.